Hi everybody. Now we're going to go over module nine. Module nine is top performance through empowerment, teamwork, and communication. Um, so again, we're kind of still in this management leadership, human resources area of the course. So let's look at the learning objectives. We're going to discuss about empowering employees from a managerial or leadership perspective. However, it's important to know that empowerment comes from within. So no one has to bestow it on you. No one has to give you permission to be empowered. And empowered just simply means that you have um, the confidence and the drive to perform the way you see fit in a professional manner that helps you be your ultimate best um, in the workplace. And this can even um, trans over into uh, your personal life too, but just to be empowered to go for, go after things in life, your goals, your ambitions, without someone saying, without someone even encouraging you to do it. You know, this is something that comes from within empowerment. But it helps if you have a manager or a leader that is, you know, trying to empower you and encourages that. But sometimes you don't have that, and you have to rely on yourself. You know. Um, more times than not then okay so let's look at the five types of teams there's also there's all sorts of different teams out there like you know a virtual team you know this is just members that meet strictly online and one thing that's really kind of um, is a kind of a, a tool that's used a lot is like WebEx or even Skype but this is where you could have, I think, you know, like even like Google Hangouts, that type of thing. Um, but like WebEx or Skype is a great way to um, have a meeting online. And you can share your screen with others. So like if you have a PowerPoint um, presentation you want to go over, you can share your screen and then people will see what's on your screen. Kind of like, you know, the way I'm, I'm doing my screen right now for you all. Um, or for you so you will even this is why it's so important to do these multimedia assignments because you will find yourself having to interview one day virtually and so it's gonna help you know you'll know where to look you'll know where to look in your camera to get the lighting you know natural light or a lamp or both you know and um, so that's why that's real important let's see here Identify team characteristics, um, which, um, you know, being cohesive, having the team gel, and definitely be able to work together as a team player is very important. There is a team conflict. So teams do go through conflict, and there's stages of team development. So that was really interesting to me when I was studying for my doctorate, you know, learning about team development, you know, forming storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Sometimes people put it in this order, uh, forming, norming, storming, and adjourning. But, you know, teams develop over time. You know, you may be in, you know, team members, like even when you're in a group at school or even at work, you know, it's like, you introduce yourself to one another. Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Lucy, and you know, and you, you're getting to know each other. That's the forming stage. Teams do go through conflict, and you know, there's like a jock jockeying for um, power, or who's going to be the team leader, or you know, which everybody can be the team leader. You can be an emergent leader. You don't have to have a certain job title to be a leader. Um, so the importance of effective communication. This is honestly something um, I've been wanting to work on more because, you know, even though I've, I have an MBA and I have a bachelor's degree in marketing, I even have a PhD in, you know, leadership. I have five business degrees, two associates. I didn't get a lot of training like on effective communication, like email communication or workplace communication. And something I was doing <laughs> 
is that and sometimes and sometimes it's okay like depending on who you're with or, or who you're talking to but you know a lot of times you'll hear people say oh just be yourself well you know if I just if I was just being myself my gosh you know I don't know if anybody I mean people would probably think oh she is so unprofessional you know because I crack jokes and I laugh and I mean and that's fine you know sometimes I don't know some you know what I'm saying just think about that if you were to go into a workplace environment and totally be yourself you know would that really work in a professional work environment and so some people say to do that but um, I'm thinking there's different there's different ways to be have an effective communication style so I've actually been um, looking at some things even on YouTube and uh, on effective communication and I, I definitely would you know advise you to do that I mean YouTube is a great source and um, I mean I love the channel and there's this woman that I've been um, like even as far as yesterday oh yeah I'm really into Camila Cabello right now <laughs> I love her um, okay I just downloaded her album on Spotify um, Amy I think that yeah I think that is uh, This will actually go really good with what we're doing. Yeah, right here. So actually, actually I'll upload this in one of our resources, a supplemental resources, but I have been, um, we're, doing, we're doing an activity on, uh, we're actually doing an activity it with on. An idea. Maybe you have a dream to change the world. On body language. So, yeah, so I'll upload this. She's a fascinating um, speaker on, on the subject. So I want to start by um, offering you a free no-tech life hack. Um, and all it requires of you is this, that you change your posture for two minutes. Well, and this is, I mean, she talks about how your body language really people make assumptions about you based on your body language. So I'm really kind of into her right now. Um, she went to Princeton. She has a PhD from Princeton. And, you know, she analyzes this. And I kind of research in this area too, like power, um, power bases. But um, so anyways, I'll upload that. And then, um, so there's a few other things here about how companies communicate in crisis and, you know, a company, oftentimes you'll see it with like school districts um, or even, you know, companies if they have a crisis like in the automobile industry, you see it a lot when there's like a faulty part on a car. Like, you know, you've seen on some cars, you know, the tires have been blowing out, the, the cruise control gets stuck or the airbags aren't deflating. There's different things, product defects. And so how does an organization handle that? And typically, typically, they, you want somebody that's higher up in the organization. So you don't want like a frontline manager or a middle manager. You want like an upper level executive to approach the news and give a statement as quickly as possible. The oil and gas industry, BP, when they had the oil spill. Um, so there's a ways that companies manage crisis and how do they communicate that? You know, they, they want to send somebody out there quickly. Where companies get in trouble is that they wait weeks and weeks before they even say anything about, for example, the oil spill or a car defect or um, something like that. And so it's, um, yeah, I mean, you want to do it quickly and show that pub public that you care, you know, about what happened or what's going on. So let's look at our activities. These are going to be due by Sunday night, 11.59 p.m., um, January 21st. But again, you can work on it every day or take one activity per day. If you want, if you want to do it at that pace, that's totally fine. So body language and nonverbal communications. What I would like, this is an, um, uh, an, another inspirational learning activity. I want you to go out and visit either like a college library, a mall, or anywhere people gather and just watch them. People watch for about 10 or 15 minutes. Observe the nonverbal cues that people give each other. Um, 
For example, if you were at the library, does the librarian smile at the students? What is the body language of the people gathered in the groups? When you leave the venue, jot down as many of your observation as you can. Notice things such as changes in nonverbal communication when someone joins a group or leaves it. And, um, you know, post your findings here. And so I want you to go and observe body language and nonverbal communications in a public setting. You can look at things such as gestures, eye contact, facial expressions, head motions, posture, um, as this presenter is talking about here in some of her information. <clears throat> There's the Prezi that's in your presentations. I just wanted to kind of show you that real quick. Um, and then you have a quiz, chapter nine quiz. It's gonna be 50 questions worth two points each. 50, their combination of true, false, and multiple choice. All right, if you need anything between now, uh, or you need any clarification or anything, just please don't hesitate to reach out to me. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.